Hello and welcome back to Tommy's Top Picks Weekly Roundup Podcast, episode 144. I'm your host, Tommy, joined by Murphy. Hello, it's a comic book takeover. New York hey. Comic Con edition. We got a bunch of stuff. John's away. Uh, we're back doing weekly top five comic videos over on Tommy's Top Shelf Comics, if you're interested in comic books. Uh, we also do that. So go take a look and join the dozens of viewers that we have. Uh, <laughs> be one of the dozens. Episode, how many episodes? Of the podcast? Yeah. 144. Dude, 144. We've been doing this a while and we haven't missed a week that's sometimes I mean, that's we'll miss sometimes we'll put the podcast out on monday because we recorded it monday night because we couldn't get sunday to work but that's really we never missed one i'm pretty sure oh dude that's impressive i mean i remember when you guys started you know yeah like it, it's it's crazy to i mean a to think about how long it's been Yes. But I mean, yeah. time is just flying by no matter what. And I feel like uh, it just keeps getting faster and faster. Oh, yeah. I mean, now it's already almost November. Yeah. I mean, ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, my God. I thought this year just began. <laughs> <laughs> but we got a bunch of things that came out of New York Comic Con, including some cardboard things. So I did want to talk. We'll talk about that at the front here. And then we'll get into the comic book stuff. So if you're just here for the cards, you can hear it now and then drop off when or stay and learn about comics because comics are super cool too so yeah. we had uh the official showing we had a leak a couple weeks ago of the marvel magic cards that were coming and now they're officially shown off and they're going to be the ones that were leaked were actually just a secret layer. So we knew Marvel and uh, Magic were having a crossover. We didn't know exactly what. I think a lot of the rumors were that this first set was going to be like a commander product, like a Doctor Who or an Assass not Assassin's Creed, like a Doctor Who, where you had like the collector box and you had the commander decks. But this is actually just a secret layer to get us started. So you can just, you there's no randomness. You just buy the cards and either uh, all is one package or individual uh, groups of them or uh, in either non-foil or foil. They go on sale November 4th uh, straight from the secret layer website. Uh, but we have different ones that obviously could be the start of Commander decks. Um, but we have the first one, which is Captain America. So Justice, Liberty, Honor. These are the values Captain America protects with a shield held high. That's why each and every courageous card in this drop, including the all-new legendary Captain America, is dedicated to protecting the downtrodden because it's not enough to just win your next Commander battle. You have to win the right way. Uh, this drop... Uh, so it's basically he's going to be uh, dealing so, with a lot of equipment. So now for uh, the uninitiated like myself. Yeah. Um, so is this like, are they going to be, is it its own separate game? No. No. So you could play like you could play the same deck you've had for 25 years and I could play a Marvel deck against it. Yeah. Or you can mix and match and put yep. Marvel characters into. I mean, how do you feel about that? So that's what? been that's been a whole thing recently. Uh, it started a couple of years ago. Magic started this universes beyond label, which is kind of like alternate universe stuff. Obviously, beyond. Uh, yeah. Universes beyond, but uh, it's bringing in. So it started with. Lord of the Rings. Well, technically, it started before it was called Universes Beyond. They came out with a Walking Dead one. And then they came out, which was just a secret layer like this with just a couple cards. Uh, and then that got everyone really upset, but people got over it. And then they did a Stranger Things. Same way, just a couple cards. Okay. Everyone got really upset, and then people got over it. And then they did Lord of the Rings, and everyone loved it. 
<laughs> oh, is that where is that where that uh the the one the of one, one of one? Yep. The yep. one of one that what doesn't post Malone on it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. I think he paid like two million dollars for it or something. So on a whole, how, what have how have people reacted? Do you know, you know? the for the longest time the old magic heads were very hashtag not my magic. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's just waiting for the right IP to come around for them and then they will figure it out or in, be less angry at it because they'll want to use those cards because uh, they are really expanding because they did Lord of the Rings was the first proper one that came with a draft box that you could actually so you could just open packs and play right away commander decks so you could open a deck and then just have a lord of the ring one was sauron one was uh aon one was frodo and sam and the other one was shoot elrond me uh gladriel mm. oh, i forget but uh and then it also had the collector boxes so they're making it they're making it like do you think they're making it work with these these elseworld type things i think lord of the rings was done really well since then it's been kind of hit or miss Uh, i guess before lord of the rings they also did uh i forgot the time the order of these they did uh just commander decks for warhammer 40k okay and then they did since they've also done doctor who with pre-made commander decks and collector boxes. And then the most recent one was Assassin's Creed, which came out with Beyond Boosters for the first time, which are just like the cheaper packs. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the collector boxes, which which are expensive. Um, yeah, that's. I mean, that's interesting because, like, I know so little about. Like, I've played Magic before, but I know yeah. so little about it. Um, I think that's I what I, these Universe Beyond things are doing: is grabbing people like you, and just waiting for people that are like adjacent in the nerd world, or like, because you go to a comic book store, they have Magic cards there. Like, yeah, nine times out of ten, they're very similar hobbies. Not similar hobbies, but draw the similar people um so they're just i think one you may start seeing them more in comic shops because marvel's it's not just this that's happening uh this is the beginning of a partnership not partnership but like yeah uh, collaboration collaboration and the uh Cause they're also the other one that they're doing next year is final fantasy. Oh, that's cool. But they made a quote in their press release saying Hasbro saying, this is just the beginning of the collaboration. Hasbro will continue to bring new ways for players to express their Marvel fandom through magic. The gatherings collection of universes beyond crossover products. The first tentpole magic set. So that makes me think, more like Lord of the Rings, where there's a draft uh, collector box, all that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. uh, is based on Marvel's Spider-Man will be released in 2025. All right, I'm in. All right, we're so it's not off. just like a Marvel set. It is specifically a Spider-Man okay. all right. set. All right, all right, all right, Tommy, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this when I saw that news. I was like, oh, Murphy's in. I'm in. I'm in. Whatever. <laughs> like, because I, I need more hobbies. Whatever. That's yeah. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> but also, do you know what? So the the first thing that came to my mind was there's a uh, mechanic in Magic called Menace, which means that you can't be blocked by one creature when attacking. You have to be blocked by at least two. And if there's not a J. Jonah Jameson card that gives someone Menace. <laughs> they messed up. <laughs> yeah, make sure, make sure you write to them right now, and make sure that's on the way. Yeah. <laughs> Just him uh, screaming, and it gives a character menace for the turn. Menace. Or <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. Is he's a menace, <laughs> or be like a 
it'll have to be like a daily bugle uh headline yeah yeah for uh for the the card art but i mean i'm i was just thinking like you have cuz you in every magic set you have different archetypes right so you have like the spider universe you have all the different spider-men and then you can have tribals for like uh cards that will say for every spider-man that you have out give it plus one plus one for example per for example um but then you could also have like the villains in the sinister six and all of those characters okay and they just they could fit into the archetypes really well like as soon as i heard about this i started my brain started going off pairing like who would be what colors I also, it also makes me really fun. It made me laugh when I saw that the new Captain America card, Captain America Commander card, is red, white, and blue, is its colors. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, gotta, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gotta do it. <laughs> um, let me see here. And then there's, oh, where is it? Uh. There are other like new cards that are coming in this, and some are just kind of like renamed. Um, but there are a bunch of cards that are very thematic, and they'll have like quotes and stuff. Oh, that's cool. Well, I mean, like I said, that's I, when I when I saw the the news about it, I was I was wondering how you know, how people would react to it, but it, it's cool to see that they're, you know, they're doing so much to try and make it, you know, still work. Yeah. Um, like, like magic would. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, that's, that's interesting. I don't know. I like as much as I've, the Spider-Man deck is going to like really wet my whistle. <laughs> 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 that'll be next, that'll be next year. It seems like it seems like a real long road to it's go. It's a down. slippery slope, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I also found that the IP stuff it has it people will be drawn in by it and then typically people will get the commander decks or draft box or something of the IP that they like and then either go all into magic and then start playing like regular magic sets and stuff like that or they will just stop <laughs> so which yeah. is fine too yeah. like i bought when the lord of the rings set came out i bought a ton of draft boxes just so i knew that in the next 10 years if i ever want to draft it i can't it's just sitting on the shelf yeah. Interesting. Uh, cards man that's it's just such a mm -hmm. there were I feel like for me, growing up, there was a there was a timeline where I kept playing trading card games, mm -hmm. and I didn't go down it. Sadly, but like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like um, it it always interests me, like in how that like just cards in general have still maintained um, like ways of staying fresh, like a game like oh, Magic, yeah. Yeah. which has been out for thirty years. 30 years yeah like it, it that's crazy to me that over 30 years they still keep things so fresh like and are able to incorporate new things into it well i think this universe is beyond is there we ran out of ideas <laughs> or we're yeah. running out so we're gonna borrow that's, some ideas yeah that's completely fair though i mean you gotta do it yeah but the art on these cards are incredible like and there's iron man titan of innovation um he is red and blue. Yeah, just red and blue. And then we have Wolverine. Best there is. Who's red and green. Um, he seems super fun. He doubles all damage that he would deal. And at the beginning of each end step, if Wolverine dealt damage to another creature this turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on him. And uh, he has regenerate. So you can pay one and a green. And regenerate Wolverine. The next time he would be destroyed this turn, instead tap him, remove him from combat, and then heal all damage to him. Which seems pretty good. Very, very Wolverine. Mm -hmm. And then the last main character is Storm. Force of Not nature. Sick. Stay sick. 
green, blue, red, flying vigilance. Uh, Ceaseless Tempest is her ability. Whenever she deals combat damage to a player, the next instant or sorcery spell you cast this turn has Storm. So when you cast this, copy it for each spell cast before it this turn. You may choose new targets for the copies. And then if you play a card that has Storm, then you Storm the Storm, and it gets real silly real quick. Yeah. Um, oh, and there is one more. There's Black Panther, who's green white. Who's just gonna? You're gonna put a lot of counters on a lot of things. <laughs> and they all have like accompanying cards with like full art that are just gorgeous. Um, where was it? Yeah, but the drop, these secret layer drops are in limited quantities. While there's no hard date the sale ends, we do plan to clean up the storefront from time to time to remove products that have been there a while. I, I imagine these selling out pretty quickly. Um, yeah, dude, nerds are going to buy them. The Spider Man set will be fine because that's like a tent pole set. It's these secret layer stuff that can go pretty That'll quick. Go fast. And when you get comic book nerds involved too. It's a whole other thing. That's that's my kind of prediction with the Marvel thing is you have you're not introducing out of all the IPs like when you bring in Lord of the Rings, there's Lord of the Rings collectors, but then not on the same level as there is comic book collectors. Yeah, you know what I mean? So you're bringing in a fan base of people who are already collectors and then offering them collector things with art of their characters. Yeah, I mean that's that's what I see uh specifically is like you know a Spider-Man collector is going to buy it. Yes. You know? Yes. Yeah. And I guess attendees of the Friday uh Friday panel uh were given a promo of uh Doctor Strange art on a counter spell card. Oh, that's cool. Oh, at New York Comic Con? Yeah. That makes sense. Which seems super cool. How much are those going for on eBay? <laughs> Probably a lot. Strange. Holy moly. Oh, no. How much? <laughs> one's being at, one, one, someone's asking 1200 bucks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but that's silly. No way that sells. Uh, the other yeah, one's one seventy. The other one's one seventy five. Let's see if any actually. Yeah, they're selling like one hundred and eighty. Oh, and then what? There was a uh, Wolverine number one variant cover that had the cover is the magic card. Oh, that's like what? Super cool. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So it has like the magic. Uh, it has like the abilities and health and power. Oh, that's super cool. Yeah. That's rad. Two hundred and seventy nine ninety nine. Yep, lower well, it for my blood, but it's still <laughs> super cool. Uh, well, do we want to get into some other stuff that was uh, announced? I'm looking yeah, at yeah. a list. There's there's a huge amount of stuff. Um, now one thing I did want to say: start this off with something that just made me upset. Uh, that <laughs> What's that? Uh, so. They they showed the first seven minutes of the Craven movie. Oh, I heard. Yeah, you had beef um, with that. Well, so I have beef with all of them. Like all of those those Sony Spider Man movies that don't involve Spider Man. Ed Hardy is done like, as Venom. Well, yeah, I I will say I'm interested to see that movie because uh, um they're introducing Null already. Are our null stocks about to go up? 
Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I got a whole <laughs> lot of Marvel comics. Like, I got yeah. variants on mm-hmm. variants, too. Mm-hmm. Like, um, but they've already said that he is too big for a one-off. Yeah. So I I think that we might end up seeing him in other stuff, too. Um, like, in actual Marvel movies. Uh, so I would definitely be interested to see that. But the Craven thing, it's like, I just hate the villains without the character you know it's like you have to at least mention spider-man somewhere along the line right and i mean venom tried to you know they did the the one little like oh multiverse oh there i'm in this world and then they're like, <laughs> here oh, i am you know, it's gone um but Craven specifically, like, I just feel like it's going to be so bad, man. <laughs> like, like Aaron Taylor Johnson comes out and he's like, he's like, oh, he's just a man who makes the choice to be a vicious hunter. And then he puts it to people. And that's when the problem happens. And it's a dark, dark story. And I'm like, it's going to be bad. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't care if it's dark, if it's bad. Yeah, like you're just telling me it's good. Look, like it's going to be bad. And they're talking about introducing other Marvel characters in that movie, which then adds a whole nother. Like, they're already putting in the Rhino. So, Rhino will be in it. Craven will be in it. And I'm sure that since all Sony owns is Spider Man, they're going to throw other Spider Man people in it. And it's like, uh, come on. Just like. Sony, can we be done? Yeah. Like, can we can we be done with them? Um, now that said, I'll still give it a chance when I can watch it for free somewhere. Um, yeah, yeah, but, sure, exactly, same. You know, but it it just like I'm like, Ugh. it just yeah. it just it just chills my bones. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Before we get but, too uh, mm-hmm. before we get too far away from the cards, I had something that popped into my head. You know, so how. So the Spider-Man set will be next year. What if they did an X-Men set? Dude, it would be like 9 million cards. I know. <laughs> well, there are. There's <laughs> over like 300 cards in the set. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd, it, I'd say they'd have to see how it starts going. But yeah. I mean, with Marvel, too, like they're going to put it out no matter what. Yeah. Like if Magic yeah. is down and Marvel's down and they see any sort of interest in it, Oh, I'd they're going to see interest gonna, in it. This is going to go yeah, for a while, I feel. I just assume it's not going to stop. Yeah. You I also know. just also want a DC set. Can you imagine like a yeah. Gotham set? I mean, it'll happen. Like if if that's the kind of the way it's going, like introducing these other IPs to magic, then I bet I bet it happens. Yeah. Especially if Marvel sees it go well, then DC is going to be like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's, we want some of that. Let's, yeah. yeah. We'll release twice as many cards. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. No, I don't know. I'm, I'm not in any rush to go see Craven. I just. Yeah. No, definitely not. Um, but, no, they've, I mean, they released a lot of cool uh, or announced a lot of cool stuff for uh, comics. Mm-hmm. I mean, first off. Uh, did you see there's a new Astonishing series starting on the app? No, what's that? So they're bringing back like the Astonishing Spider-Man and Astonishing oh, X-Men and stuff like that, but it's going to be just those Infinity comics. Interesting. Um, But so it looks like they have... So Spider-Man issues 1 and 2 are already available for free, so no login required. Neat. Um, so that's cool, but then they're going to be doing, looks like X-Men, uh, and Avengers so far. Um, but I mean, I don't know how, I I don't always like the Infinity comics. Um, I just don't really like the format all that much. Just the continuous reading or scrolling basically. Um, but I do think it's cool that they're they're incorporating stories into that. Now, obviously, I'd rather they instead of worrying about that, just make comics come out 
after one month like DC does, <laughs> yeah. you know, but you know, whatever they got to do what they got to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, yeah, they did that. Uh, they've started to announce, they announced ultimate Wolverine. Uh, so the, what the ultimate universe. Yeah. Back that, fully that I'm excited for. Yeah. I mean, ultimate universe coming back is crazy. And, I mean, it's, yeah, it's seen a success. I mean, I remember that was one of the, before we stopped, uh, before we took a break with the top five comics, uh, that was about when Ultimate Spider-Man was starting. The amount of people that are not comic book readers that reached out to me and was like, hey, I picked up Ultimate Spider-Man number one. I was like, holy crap. Well, like, and that's, <laughs> I mean, that's the thing, like the Ultimate Universe, when it was first coming out, was so popular yeah like the the original yeah and then it went away and i think it 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 was time for it to to go away um especially with how much they do with the movies yeah uh and like wanting to kind of keep it a little more simple yeah um but like it's such a good way to reinvigorate stories you Mm -hmm. know and like tell tell the same story a different way um like ultimate spider-man has a completely different origin and like he had a a different origin initially sort of you know still uncle ben dying but like now it's a fully different story you know like they really when they revamped the ultimate universe they were like oh okay let's just make this event something that just throws a bunch of superheroes in the mix. And so mm-hmm. like ultimate Spider-Man uncle Ben's alive and best friends with J Jonah Jameson and, you know, Aunt May's Aunt May's dead. And, you know, Peter Parker's married to Mary Jane, with two kids like it, you know, they did a, a really good job with that. Are they um, the two kids that were with Paul? No, no. Okay. So <laughs> those kids are gone. Those kids are gone. Okay. I need to catch up on um, them. Yeah, they they made that a uh They they did circle back to that. We do have answers now. Yeah, they they Zeb Wells touched on that and then touched now on the kids it, of are course. gone. Yeah. yeah okay. Well the, <laughs> they explained it because it was like the villain okay. Rabin who came from the ult- the universe that they were in where Mary Jane was stuck with Paul. Um and then they had the kids. It turns out like they're not real. Okay. They were just like, they were created as a way to screw with them. I hate it, but I'm also glad they touched on it. Yeah. But now, I mean, that, especially even with Zeb Wells leaving, that's a story. Yeah. Like they are going, they're going to keep building on it. Um, A lot of the little tie-ins at the end of the last big, uh, big issue had, Paul, be, you know, looking for something to do with the kids and dealing with it. it's yeah, it's a thing, but I digress. <laughs> um, but no, so it's like the ultimate universe, I think, done a really good job of a slowly coming back. Yeah. Um, where, I mean, we have four total titles. Yeah. Uh, you know, the ultimates obviously ties everything together. Then you have Spider-Man, X-Men, and Black Panther. Yeah. But they haven't crossed at all yet. Okay. So, I mean, obviously, I did, we still got a couple months until that, that Wolverine title comes yeah. out. But I'd assume that that's going to start where they start kind of melding together. Yeah. Um. Now I'm, you know, anxious about whenever they do their first event. <laughs> and then, and then yeah, like, oh, yeah you need to have everything yeah um but no it's i mean it's cool to see that like ultimate uh wolverine looks really sweet uh and it's supposed to be a year after wolverine i get i mean it can't be a year after he got his powers but you know what i mean like he's a year in a year in no yeah a year into being well, actually, no, I guess it could Putting be on after the costume. he got his powers. It, it could be after he got his powers, because the whole point now of the Ultimate Universe is that the Maker came back and rebuilt the universe 
without the heroes in it. And then Tony Stark basically found the Maker's dungeon that had, like, the spider that bit Peter Parker, stuff like that. Crazy. And he just sent all this stuff out into the universe to the people that were supposed to have the powers. So I guess technically Logan could be living a different life with no powers, and then he becomes Wolverine. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm I'm definitely interested to see that. Um, yeah, I'll be reading that one for sure. Yeah. But, I mean, Marvel obviously did announce a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. We're going to have Doctor Doom as, mm -hmm. as the big bad. So I guess he's getting an event in February. Maybe it's not an event, but like a just a a title that explains what's happening. Five issue limited series. Yeah. Yeah. So while well, we still have some time. Do. Yeah. <laughs> well, we still have some time until we see Robert Downey Jr. as Doctor Doom in the MCU. Marvel Comics is helping with. Uh, the wait as it is making Dr. Doom the star of the new crossover event called The Rise of the Emperor Doom. This five-issue limited series will begin in February and is set six months after Doom becomes the Marvel Universe's new Sorcerer Supreme. He emerges, yeah, in, yeah. In he emerges from hiding and declares himself Emperor of the World. The other world powers don't seem to oppose to this idea and even the Avengers who are the only ones who can stand in his way, start to question whether the world is better off under Doom's rule. The Rise of Emperor Doom is written by Ryan North and art by R.B. Silva and cover art by Ben Harvey. Seems super cool. Yeah, I mean, Doom's the best. Yeah, I, I, like, I really do love Doom. What I'm upset about, though, is I've been wanting to get uh, like a Jack Kirby Doom mask tattoo. Uh -huh. Now I can't do it. Because then they'd be like, oh, is it because of Robert Downey? You know, like, <laughs> no. No. It's not. Just think. get it like just get it like somewhere that would be covered by like shorts or something. So no one yeah, else will see yeah. it, but you know it's there. But I know it's there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that that's gonna be cool. Um, they're definitely going to, you know, build that up. I mean, they're talking this event up. They're saying um, it's a status quo shift coming to Marvel Comics, the likes of which haven't been seen since 2008's Dark Reign. Which, I mean, I guess makes sense, because Dark Reign had Norman Osborn leading S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm -hmm. So, similar similar idea. Um, that said, did you, speaking of like kind of the Ultimate Universe 2, um, you see the list of absolute titles that they released for dc yes it it's gonna be they're gonna they're gonna just shotgun this yeah. absolute verse at us <laughs> yep. they're like, we don't know they're, how to turn it off they're not gonna they're not gonna baby step us no i'm looking at it now let's see yeah let me, let, i got this part i guess it came out of the panel jim lee and friends uh, that not only the much-loved Vertigo imprint is making a comeback, but one of the most yes. popular Batman stories of all time is getting a sequel after more than 20 years. Lee revealed that he and writer Jeff Loeb have reunited to produce a sequel to the 0204 storyline Batman Hush. As before, the story will unfold in the pages of the flagship monthly Batman series, beginning with Batman 158 in March. This would seem to confirm that the current writer Chip Zdarsky is ending his run with 157. Uh, DC will also publish a four-page prelude to Hush 2 in November's Justice League Unlimited number one. There we go. Um, um, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. yeah, I mean, absolute... Green Lantern, absolute Martian Manhunter, which sick. Like Martian mm -hmm. Manhunter, I don't think gets the respect he deserves. No. And his but his <sighs> I love Martian Manhunter. There was one really good run. I'm blanking on the creative team. I think it was New 52 that I really enjoyed. But every other one, I want them to be good every time, and I pick them up every time, and then I'm disappointed every time. 
Yeah, that's that's very fair. Um, so hopefully, I mean, with this, they're able to kind of get around that because yeah. it's it's it can be so different. It yeah. looks goofy as hell, though. Did you see that? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. That's, I get it. That's why I got <laughs> concerned because the art is goofy. Yeah. You can say it's goofy. Yeah. Um, but then they also saw we got Absolute Flash as well, which will be cool. Mm-hmm. So any Absolute you, Flash looks really cool. Anyone listening who's not aware, the Absolute Universe is basically DC's answer to the Ultimate Universe from Marvel. Mm-hmm. Um, we've seen already, I mean, Scott Snyder uh, and Nick Dragota released Absolute Batman, and I'm head over heels. Um I mean, I was always going to be, I guess, with that creative. To go to one drawing <laughs> Batman, yes, please. Yeah, right. Oh, that's so good. Have you read it, by the way? No, no. dude. There's there's one part where uh, he's like facing off against this huge, huge goon, and uh, and Batman himself is giant, like ginormous, like Frank uh, Miller Batman. Yeah, yeah like. He's like six, six five or something like that, and just like <laughs> great muscle. Um, but the guy pulls out like a machete, and he's like, he's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill you with this machete, Batman. And Batman takes like a little stick out of his pocket, and then he attaches it to the bat on his chest, which comes off of his chest and is an axe. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> that's pretty sick. Dude, it's awesome. <laughs> like I was like, yes, that's metal as hell, dude. <laughs> but we got. I mean, let's see what else we got. I mean, DC did announce a whole bunch of movies, well, movies and TV show stuff. Yeah, I wasn't um, too. I think Vertigo coming back is huge, though. Yeah, and they said Vertigo is going to really um, still, it, like, it's going to be their crea- creator-owned imprint still. Yeah, I think they killed it so, at the wrong time. So I don't really remember when they got rid of it. It was only a couple of years ago. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they're they're talking about uh, Nice House by the Sea, which mm-hmm. is awesome, by the way. 2020, um, 2020 thing ended, okay. which I guess for a frame of reference, uh, during that time, I know the card industry was booming, but the comic industry was struggling. Uh, there was printing issues, like just was, that was peak pandemic and supply and demand and comics require printers and paper and transportation. And it's a lot. Um, so I know a lot of comics were printed short printed during that time because they weren't selling as much. Um, and a lot of comics were just being delayed or in delayed indefinitely or just canceled uh, mm-hmm. early. And then to the point where DC closed the imprint. Um, but now that things are somewhat ish back to normal. Uh, production wise, like you can, they don't have any uh, distribution or production issues compared to what they were. So, having being able to, they are now much more easily able to bring that back, and it makes more sense, especially after how much image and boom and these new books are taking off. Yeah, well, speaking of image. Um, my boy Rick Remender's imprint had huge announcements, uh, for Image. So Giant Generator is mm-hmm. uh, Remender's imprint there. Okay, they signed a big deal. Uh, he signed. They signed a whole bunch of writers and artists. Nice. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, because I, I mean, I really like Rick Remender. Yeah. Now, obviously, he's not going to be on all the books, but like Zeb Wells has an exclusive. Uh contract with them right um things like that like there i think they announced like 10 10 other people 
Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven artists and writers um, who all come from seemingly Marvel and DC. Nice. So that that would be cool. Uh, Distillery also announced a yep. whole bunch more stuff. Yep. I think eleven new titles. Yeah, and it's a great time for independently owned. Yeah, like pumping. Definitely interested to see. I mean, that's the thing is like I think that comic books in general have made such a huge comeback. Yeah, you know, um, and I like I you know I like to see that you know we've we've it's come back so hard and it's growing again. Yeah. Uh, especially with independently owned stuff. Yeah, because I feel like a lot of people just write off comics as superheroes. It's like, oh, I'm not into superheroes. I don't need to read comics. It's like, yeah. well, it's just, it's a medium and yeah. it's not all superheroes. Well, that's why I've I've enjoyed uh, getting my nephew into comics because he does not, he's he doesn't care for superheroes. Stuff. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, dude, that's not, that's not what it is. Yeah. You know? Like, give me one second. I gotta. My, my dog's fighting with that other dog through the window. <laughs> they never told me that dogs would bark. You know what I mean? <laughs> Who would have known? <laughs> they say, "Oh, they cuddle." You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's. I mean, it's. You see, with New York Comic Con, like, uh, I mean, any big convention, like the all the shows and the movies and. You know, I even me as a comic fan, I get burnt out by all the shows and movies sometimes. Oh, yeah. So it's it's always good, like, to see the announcements from the actual, like, comic books themselves, not just the the stories and how they get portrayed to people, you know, who don't really want to read the comics. But, like, for us who, I I mean, I love the art and I love the story, I love the medium itself. Like, it always. It's just great around this time when you you hear what's coming next. Oh, yeah. I mean, New York Comic Con and San Diego are the two big cons where you kind of get, like, the big news coming out of. Yeah. Now, I am sad I didn't make it this year. It next was, year. It was hard. We're it, was, going. it was hard uh, to, to skip it. But, you know, when you spend all your New York money on a guitar... <laughs> I, I had to I had to make the decision well next but year you were there. I, mean, I was you in were New there. York I was in New York in but there. I did not yeah. go uh, we were no. just in town for Thursday um, we went to see a show that uh, was very Court of Alzi it was super cool um, but I did make it to Midtown Comics because I needed to pick up Nightwing 118 and read that. I couldn't wait. Uh, And then I also picked up... So I picked up the regular copy, and then I picked up the variant of him in the sky. And then... Uh, Which one was that? It was only... It was like 10 bucks or something. It wasn't very expensive. Did you didn't get... Was anyone signing or anything? No. No. Because it was day one of... Uh, Ah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Next year, I'll go back. Uh, I just uh, this year I had to skip it, but um, yeah. yeah, no, the, the Midtown Comics was damn, like I said, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I left, I left with this. I mean, the Goku statue I have is sick, um, but then uh, yeah, I spent like oh, that's a good variant. Yeah, um, I spent like eighty bucks on variants. <laughs> <laughs> I think honestly, um, that's probably because I. Um, actually what we did yesterday was we finished or, uh, we've been pouring cement down in the basement for the room, the storage room that we're going to be storing, uh, all my comics in. And, uh, so we're just waiting for the cement to dry. And then once they're all in there, I'll have access to my boxes again. Cause right now they're all just stacked in a pile and I can't really yeah. get to them. So I didn't want to pick anything up. But uh, once that's all set up, I may start picking up variants here and there. 
Yeah. Uh, I, I had to stop buying variants so much because I was buying a lot. Yeah. You know? And well, I would I would just be getting variants. Like, I wouldn't be getting, like, my weekly pool yeah. list. Like, I'd take a look, see if there are any variants that week that I wanted kind of a thing. Yeah, so what I do for my collection is, like, I have... I have... Uh, what's it called? The BCW... Um, yeah. Boxes. Yeah. Just for variants and, like, my collection and then i have just regular um my cardboard long boxes for all the issues you know my entire so collection just, is in those plastic bcw boxes you see that's one thing i i, I haven't made that transition yet because that's an expensive transition it <laughs> was it was but there was like they came the on Amazon, the BCW boxes, the five pack was on this like crazy sale. So I bought like 30 of them because I already had some. So I bought like a ton of them at once. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, and I so think I, it ended I, up being like, I think it was like two, 250 for 30 of them, which oh, not is bad. not bad. But. For Oh, for, uh, do you do the short boxes? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can't do the um, long ones. My back can't handle it. <laughs> well, yeah, mine neither, but I just keep doing it. And That's why I don't want to move ever again. Yeah, and with the shelves that we have, and just it just made a lot more sense because I knew I'm going to be picking these up and putting them down. Yeah. And now through stairs, so we shall see. But well, let's see. What else did it? What else did? Oh. New Star Wars. Right. New Star Wars and uh, just splitting off of my Goku statue. Uh, mm-hmm. They uh, inducted Akira Toriyama into the like, Anime Comic Book Hall of Fame at New York Comic Book. Cool. Uh, since he passed. And they, I guess they showed a bunch of stuff with the, the new anime that's coming out. The uh, Dragon Ball Z Daima. Um, oh, okay. That looks really good. Uh, it's basically going to be this, all the issue or the episodes re-released, but like oh. a new, uh, new art style. Oh, okay. Um, so that that's pretty cool. I think they're releasing the first three episodes in, uh, in theaters. Interesting. Which is wild. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then we got some we got some good uh, Star Wars releases. Mm-hmm. That brought it up. Yep. Jedi Knight series set before the Phantom Menace. Uh, it's going to be called Jedi Knights, Star Wars Jedi Knights, and it'll explore the heroes of the Jedi Order before the Phantom Menace. Uh, the series will be created by writer Mark Guggenheim and artist Madibek Musabekov. Uh, and you can check out the main cover. It's basically just all bunch of Jedi's dual cover Dual art, or like art on both sides. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking too. They have a bunch of the hyperspace uh, stories seemingly as graphic novels. That makes sense. Start putting those so up. They, yeah, so they have Grievous and Mace Windu already announced. Nice. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, what else? What is this? They're talking about the the final stories in the High Republic. Damn, no. they're, already done with it. they're already done with it. <laughs> um, but the Bad Batch is getting a comic, which is cool. Did you watch any of the uh, the show? No, I need to. Yeah, the show. I mean, the show is really good. Um, but then they're gonna get their own comic. Uh, yeah, because currently they're putting out the Battle of Jakku, which is a trilogy limited series. Uh, the chronicles the final battle and the war between the Rebellion and the Empire. Uh, many fans have speculated that Marvel will follow up the Battle of Jakku with a new line of comics set in the New Republic era. But for now, Marvel has yet to reveal what's coming in the new year. <laughs> they tried the High Republic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now pivot. They they tried, and then they were like, ah! All right, <laughs> let's go to the New Republic. Yeah, I mean that's I that's upsetting to me. I you know it is. 
I was really hoping, like, especially with the the High Republic, like, I think it's between. It, I think they tried, and then the acolyte may have been the nail in the coffin too. I I I, agree. which I just think um, is so unfair because that's such a bet. Like, I didn't not like the acolyte. I liked the acolyte, but it is when you are looking at it through the scope of introducing the public to the high Republic era. Yeah. Not through comic books, not through novels. Like the main, most people will see this. A lot of people, a lot more people will see this than read the books or comics. Uh, I think that was a very bad choice. I don't think it was a good show. Um, No, it was a good show for what it was, but not for, I mean, we've talked about it. Like, I really wish it would have gotten us. Like, yeah. I think they could have really built on it. Like, not even for like Darth Plagueis and things like that, but like, I, just the the Sith centered story, where it almost makes the Sith seem not like the bad guys. Uh, which, even though they are, um, but like <laughs> you know, like them trying to preserve the Sith you know, traditions and things like I thought that was going to be a really cool story. Uh, mm-hmm. It just, yeah, I think, I think it just wasn't a great showing. Yeah. Uh, which sucks. But I mean, now let's go further into the future. Cause I mean, they did announce that they're going to have um, a new movie set after uh, the sequel trilogy mm-hmm. as upset as that makes people probably too. <laughs> uh, but you know, whatever, let's do, let's take what we can get, you know, yeah. <laughs> but, more Star Wars so. is more Star Wars. And there's a lot to come. That's for sure. Uh, but now it's, it's cool to see Star Wars still being there. I just, I, I get upset about the fan and yeah. like how, how bad people can be. It's like, uh, like, I just think back to when there was no Star Wars. Like, yeah. Or when all we had was the Clone Wars. Yeah. You know, yeah. And it's like now we have so much Star Wars and people are upset. And it's like, come on. Like, we, we wanted this. Yeah. Like, nothing's going to be perfect every single time. No. Like, and if we lose it, how we may never get it again. Yeah. What if what if people complain so much that they're like, you know, Star Wars, you yeah. know, Disney like, sells Marvel. Cool. Disney sells Star Wars. Yeah, we don't want that. No. Well, I mean, somebody else might do Star Wars. Pretty Sony, well too, give it to <laughs> Sony. They'll do great. Give it to Sony, and then we'll have a story of, you know, a guy who can move things with his mind, but they've never heard of the Jedi. Yeah. <laughs> and there's no <laughs> he's lightsabers. Like, he's like, what is this laser sword? <laughs> he has a laser axe. Oh, well, I will say that they did start <laughs> getting into that in the Acolyte, where they had yep. the the whip, and, uh, the, yeah, the Jedi with the whip. Yeah, which, that was super cool. Eh, I don't know how I felt about it. I, I'm, <laughs> when it comes to my Star Wars weapons, I am a little bit of a traditionalist. Sure, you know, like I like, but each lightsaber is different in their own. Yeah, it's but a representation like a of the Jedi. Or you know, the it's a saber, though, you know? <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. Some <laughs> some sabers, some state si- some sabers today sift, some go limp. Yeah, sometimes they go limp and yeah. uh, floppy. Yeah, yeah, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. a Jedi on a bad day. I swear <laughs> <this never> <laughs> oh, oh, cool. Well, anything else before we wrap this up? No, this has been the comic book takeover, I guess. We'll see uh, what all happens with the stuff they released at New York Comic Con. But yeah. there's always new new comic stuff coming out, so um, I'm happy. Yeah, and I'll get to play Marvel's Spider-Man 2 number. Or the oh, yes, I saw that. Coming out on PC. Yeah, that, I mean, it, it, it's a game. It was a good game. Was it good? You know. Worth playing? Yeah, I, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, my only issue with it was, especially compared to the first one, which was so good. Uh, yeah. It was just very quick. That's fine. That's like, what I'm looking for. I don't want a long... When I don't, I don't typically play single-player games. 
Um, oh, yeah. I typically, See when I'm playing at. video games, I am usually playing with my wife. And so I like to play co-op or some form of multiplayer or at least be able to just play the game together. Yeah. Um, See, I generally, I generally like single player games for the most part. Yeah. Uh, and the first game, I mean, took me a long time, not a long time, but a, a, a respectable amount of time for a sixty nine ninety nine game. Yeah. Uh, to complete and get a hundred percent on, but yeah. Spider Man Two, I think it took me eighteen hours to get the hundred percent. Oh, geez. So it's quick. Yeah. Like, no, that's that's actually a selling point for me. <laughs> now, and then the other issue I had was, uh, well, so Insomniac had just gone through like all the leak stuff mm -hmm. and like their data breach. Yeah. Uh, but like the first game, they had a clear path through the DLC and yeah. everything. They're like, okay, September, here comes the game. Yeah. October, yeah. you get DLC one, yeah. November, December. No now, DLC one, here. They, there's no DLC yet. I mean, they've talked about it, and I think they've like kind of teased at it. Well, they uh, said they said at New York Comic Con, alongside the release date, they also ended hopes for its long rumored Venom DLC by sharing the studio has no additional story content planned for Spider-Man. Oh, did they? Yeah. See, that's that's awful then, because the end of some of the missions set up DLC. No way. Oh, that's bad. Okay. Yeah, like there there's a full there's a full like like submission set, like side mission quest that uh deals with Carnage. And at the end, Cletus Cassidy gets on a helicopter and goes away. <laughs> and there, and he's like he's like you you're like leaving the mission, you're like, "Oh, we're going to get a Carnage thing." Yeah. And then now, nope. Yeah, maybe so, I'll wait for the Steam summer sale so it'll have been out and it'll be cheap and then I'll just play through the story and then call it a day. That said, I mean, I got a sick statue out of buying it. So That's fair. That's fair. That's <laughs> fair enough. Cool. All, All right. right. Well, until next week, we'll catch you guys later. See ya.